We're going to start the section of financial maths with a little bit of revision of the financial maths that you've done in previous years. We're just going to look at compound interest first. So 1,000 Rand is invested for one year at an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded annually, which means it's going to be compounded once through that year. And we want the balance in the account after one year. So just normal compound interest formula. This will be on your formula sheets in your, in your final exams. So 1,000 Rand goes in. And remember to write that interest rate as a decimal. So remember to get your interest rate as a decimal, you just take 12 and you divide it by 100. And you get the 0, 0,12. And type it in your calculator, you'll get 1,120 Rand. Let's look at a second example. And this one is almost exactly the same. The only difference is this time we're going to compound monthly, which means we're going to compound it 12 times in the year. So what happens is the interest rate we then have to divide by 12, but because it's happening 12 times in the year, we're going to multiply the number of years by 12. And again, we just type it into our calculators exactly as we see it, and we end up with 1,126 Rand and 83 cents. Let's look at example 3. And in 3a, we're going to calculate an interest rate Compounded annually, which means it's compounded once, that would double an investment over a seven-year period. Now, all they're telling me is that the investment is going to double. They're not telling me how much money that is being invested. So I can do a number of things. If you want to just work out a general investment that's going to double, you can start with X, and if it doubles, you will have 2X. You can start with 100 Rand, and if it doubles, you'll have 200 Rand. But I do find the easiest thing to do is to start with one rand. So if it's going to double over a seven-year period, you're going to end up with two rand. All right. And the first thing you want to get rid of is that exponent. So I'm going to take the seventh root of two, which gives me 1,10408. And don't round off yet. Just write down a few decimals. You can subtract one. But I want to know the interest rate, which means I need to show my answer as a percentage. So to get a percentage, we will multiply by 100. And in this final step, we can round off to two decimal places. So our final answer is 10,41%. Let's try a similar example. This time, though, we're going to compound interest quarterly, which means it's going to happen four times in the year. The Investment is going to triple, which means if I start with one rand, I'm going to end up with three rand. And it is happening over a seven-year period, so I put in the number of years, but because it's happening quarterly, I'm going to divide the interest rate by four, but I'm going to multiply the number of years by four. Now, seven times four is 28. The first thing I want to get rid of is that exponent. So I'm going to take the 28th root of 3. I'm going to take 1 over to the other side, which means I end up with 0, 0,04001. Then I need to get interest. So I'm going to multiply by 4, but that won't give me the interest rate. I will then need to multiply that answer by 100. So I'm going to take 0, 0,04001. What if the answer is still in my calculator? I'm going to multiply by 4 and multiply by 100. And now we can round off to two decimal places. So we get an interest rate of 16,01%. So you might be asked to compare nominal and effective interest rates. In other words, they will tell you the bank is quoting you 12%, but how much are you actually earning? You're actually earning 12,68% if you compound monthly. So the formula that you will use is just comparing two interest rates. Now on the right hand side, those M's are the compoundings. So if it's monthly, they will be 12. They will both be 12. They have to match. If it's quarterly, they will both be 4. So the number of years is irrelevant in this calculation. Those M's must match. The M in the brackets is a name only. Remember, the M in the brackets tells me that it's the nominal interest. And the I on the left-hand side is the effective interest. So let's have a look at an example. We want to calculate the effective interest rate, so the one on the left-hand side, that is the same as a nominal interest rate of 13,5% compounded quarterly. 
So I want to calculate the I on the left, and my 13,5% is being compounded quarterly. So it's happening four times. So I will divide by four, and I multiply by four, the exponent. So the number of years is irrelevant. They haven't even told me the number of years. I don't need to know that. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the right-hand side. And we are going to get a bracket to the power of 4. Then we subtract 1. And I end up with 0, 0,1420. And if I want to express this as a percentage, we're going to multiply it by 100. And I get 14,2%. So what that means is, if the bank tells me I'm going to earn 13,5% interest, but they're going to compound it quarterly, I'm actually going to earn 14,2%. Let's look at one more example. This time we've got an effective annual interest rate of 16,1%, and we want to convert that to a nominal interest rate compounded monthly. In other words, I'm actually going to earn 16,1%. And what should the bank have told me I'm going to earn? So this time, we've got the I value, which is going to be 16,1, but we don't know how much was compounded monthly. So the 16,1 we're going to express as a decimal on the left-hand side, and we don't know how much the nominal interest rate is, but we want to know it's compounded monthly. So we're going to divide by 12 and have an exponent of 12. The first thing I want to get rid of is the exponent. So we're going to take the 12th root of 1,161. And the 12th root of 1,161 will give me an answer minus 1. Now you don't have to calculate that answer yet. We want to use our calculator as little as possible. So first thing you're going to do is subtract 1, and we end up with 0, 0,01251. But I still have to multiply by 12. And if I multiply by 12, I end up with 0, 0,1502. But I want an interest rate. So my nominal interest rate is 15,02%. In other words, if the bank tells me I'm going to pay, I'm going to earn 15,02%, but they will compound it monthly, I will actually end up earning 16,1%. Let's look at one final example of revision, and this time we're going to look at depreciation. So we want to calculate the book value, in other words, the value after depreciation has taken place, of a machine that cost 45,000 Rand, and we want to see how much it depreciates to at the end of four years. And the depreciation is 16% per annum on a reducing balance. Now, reducing balance can be compared to compound interest, but because it's depreciation, it's got a minus in the bracket instead. So it's worth 45,000 Rand at the moment, and we want to see what is it going to be worth after four years. Remember just to substitute that 16% in as a decimal fraction, type it into your calculator, and your final answer is 22,404 Rand and 21 cents. Thanks for watching Max Maths. If you liked what you saw, please like, share and subscribe.